Roll call. Palermo. Festerson. Here. Gray. Here. Harding. Here. Melton. Here. Pauls. Here. Mr. President. Here. Please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance and remain standing for the invocation by Council Member Palermo. Thank you. Well, happy Tuesday, everyone. Uh, this weekend, I spent quite a bit of time in Kearney for state baseball. So congratulations to those American Legion teams that made it. Of course, I was there for my beloved South High, who uh, is now out of it. But nonetheless, they made it. And a, a couple things really struck me as reminders and, and, and what we're doing uh, as you sit there and watch an American Legion baseball game, just the the, the pureness of the baseball, uh, the true American of that baseball, and just the love of the game. It was great. But also being in Kearney, uh, those other parents in the stands from surrounding cities, I, I promise they could pick you out when you're from Omaha. I don't know what it is. <laughs> but uh, it, it was a great conversation because as we sit here and make many important decisions on a lot of topics, and it seems each and every week that's what happens, uh, the conversation was from plastic bags to rental ordinance to even, you know, hey, what are you guys going to do about uh, this trash? So as we make these hard decisions, uh, we have to keep in mind that as we try to uh, increase uh, the people we have in this city, we have to think about those that not only we're grabbing from other states, but the surrounding cities that we want to be a part of Omaha. And the decisions we make, well, uh, the parents will... Uh, tell their kids, hey, here's why maybe you should go there based on this choice or maybe not. So just a couple things I knew, but it was a great reminder of how important and the decisions we make uh, affect our community. So thank you. An affidavit of publication is on file for the pre-council and city council meeting, and a current copy of the Open Meeting Act is posted in a white binder on the east wall of the legislative chambers. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this meeting of the Omaha City Council. We thank you for joining us today. As a courtesy to those in attendance, we ask that you please turn off or silence your phones at this time. Madam Clerk. Item 6, a resolution to approve the revised preliminary plat for legend trails with waivers of Section 5382, Street Width, Section 5393, Curb and Gutter, Section 5399, Sidewalks, and Section 5384D, Lot Frontage, located northwest of 222nd and Q Streets. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on Item 6 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Doug Kellner, TD2, 10836 Old Mill Road, here on behalf of the applicant. I'm available to answer any questions if you have them. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Pasterson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 6 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 7, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the ACI 1 overlay district to incorporate into that district the property located at 1804 Paul Street. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item 7 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 7 is approved, 7 to 0. Yes. Item 8, an ordinance to amend the boundaries of the ACI-2 PL overlay district to incorporate into that district the property located at 550 North 88th Plaza. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item 8 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Doug Kellner with TD2, 10836 Old Mill Road, here on behalf of the applicant, available to answer any questions if you have any. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 8 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 9, an ordinance to rezone property located at 7930 Blondo Street from R8 District to LC District. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on Item 9 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Elizabeth, Elizabeth Sevchak, uh, 2120 South 72nd Street. I can answer any questions you have, but otherwise, good. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? 
are there any opponents public hearing is closed council member festerson thanks mr president just a quick question for you elizabeth sure so this is the corner of um, blondo and benson gardens boulevard right yes and are we just rezoning to make it consistent with the corridor there or what's the idea so um for the last 50 years there's been a office space there that's been a dental office um, operated by the Mancuso family. When it originally went in, it was under, I think it was called R9, and the zoning code allowed for that. The zoning code subsequently changed, making it out of compliance with the zoning. So we're changing it that way it is compliant with the zoning. It is in a mixed-use neighborhood area there. So across the street there's commercial. Um, behind it is high-density high residential. It might have been something greater than R9. I don't remember what it was, but basically the change in the zoning code made it not in conformity with the zoning code, so we're just trying to fix that. Okay. And what do you see for the future of that property? Um, I think it'll be continued to be used as a dental office and shared lease. Um, they lease out part of it, so okay. that'd be the continued use. Okay. Great. Thank you. Yep. Motion approved. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 9 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 10, an ordinance to rezone property located at 1920 Nicholas Street and 1019 Florence Boulevard from CBD District to DS District. Property is located within an ACI 1 Overlay District. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. The public hearing on item 10 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? I'm Kyle Hazy with ENA Consulting Group, 10909 Mill Valley Road, representing the client and applicant, Vecino Group. Um, and I'll make myself available for any questions. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item 10 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 11, an ordinance to rezone property located at 5066 Harrison Street from R1 District, low density to R4 District, high density, Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval. Public hearing on item 11 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item 11 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 12, a resolution to approve a special use permit to allow large group living in an R3 district, medium density, located at 19111 Western Avenue. Planning Board and Planning Department recommend approval of these communication and opposition. The public hearing on item 12 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? My name is Erin Render. I'm the applicant. 2315 South 168th Street, and I'm here for any questions. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Raise your hand if you intend to testify as an opponent. Okay, if you can make everyone who wants to oppose this and testify, please make your way closer to the microphone. Hello. I am Jim Marriott. I live at 18687 Webster Circle in the Five Fountains subdivision. I'm the president of the Five Fountains HOA board as well as a member of SID uh, number 523, which is the SID that oversees Five Fountains. Um, I'm here really for two reasons today. Uh, one is to convey the concerns from a number of residents who are unable to attend the meeting today. And two, uh, to represent the HOA board regarding uh, the fact that this will be a direct violation of the covenants that are in place in the neighborhood. Um, so first, regarding the feedback I've received from residents, uh, over the last couple of weeks I've heard from probably 30 plus residents uh, regarding a number of concerns that they have for this proposal, um, all of which were against the proposal, and I'll kind of summarize their main uh, concerns and opposition and do a couple of main points. Uh, first, there was a lot of concern about uh, the fit and feel uh, that this proposed commercial building um, would have in the subdivision. Um, while the facade of the building does look kind of similar to some houses, there are going to be park uh, two parking lots involved, and uh, just we don't see it conforming uh, to the look and feel of the rest of the neighborhood. Um, there were concerns about potential traffic issues uh, and traffic congestion that would be 
um, coming about as part of this. Uh, it sounds like the uh, facility can house up to 12 people at a time in addition to a couple of staff members, so that's going to be a lot of cars coming and going in a location that's already relatively congested and has uh, tough ingress and egress. Uh, there were a number of safety concerns, uh, both for the folks who would be living in this facility as well as nearby neighbors. Um, it's our understanding that the group home will be uh, used for um, memory assisted uh, folks and so while it's you know, unfortunate when incidents can come up, we think it's uh, just a reality that sometimes they do and so that can pose a potential safety risk for again both the residents of that facility and the residents of the neighborhood. Um, there's concern about uh, potential adverse impact to property values in the neighborhood. Um, given that it's a neighborhood of 149 uh, single-family residences, um, changing that and bringing in commercial businesses, commercial facilities um, would potentially have an adverse impact. Um, also, there's a lot of, uh, and lastly, there's a lot of uncertainty around what potential future use uh, for a facility like this might bring. Uh, we understand the intended use currently is for uh, memory assistance, but in the event that some point down the road that changes, uh, the owners of the business decide to sell, um, you know, we're kind of at the mercy of whoever decides to buy that next and uh, whatever number of issues may arise as a result of that. So that's kind of a concise summary of the feedback I've received from a number of residents in the neighborhood. And uh, now to represent the, the HOA board, our main concern is that uh, this proposal would be in a direct violation of the covenants in the neighborhood. Um, the covenants do specifically prohibit businesses from operating within the neighborhood. And um, I guess I would just say that all the residents agreed to a set of rules when they bought or built their house in the neighborhood. Uh, the rules were established around 12 years ago. Uh, they haven't changed. Um, everyone bought or built a house in there with the understanding that these were the rules and that it would be single family residences only. And now to, to change the rules with the last lot left in the subdivision really is unfair to all those folks who signed up for that and made you know, fairly significant investments um, based on those rules. Um, we've consistently kind of voiced our opposition and concerns to the folks with Legato um, throughout a, a number of instances over the last couple of months here. At the planning board hearing, um, I invited some of them into my kitchen in my house to, you know, talk through uh, what we could get figured out. And um, uh, unfortunately, it sounds like they are still working to move um, kind of in the same direction on this. So we, we've consistently voiced our, our concerns, and here we are today. Um, and I guess generally um, our thought from the board is that um, approving this special use permit would really favor one business over the other 148 residents in the neighborhood. So that's the summary. If you have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Thank Thanks. you. Next opponent, please. Rich Dureski, uh, 18916 uh, North HWS Cleveland Boulevard in the Five Fountains neighborhood. I'm one of those residents that has purchased a home in there in the last, uh, I guess, year and a half uh, with the understanding of the covenants of single family housing use. And, uh, you know, I oppose this, this uh, measure of to expand through a special use permit of what the land was originally zoned for and planned for. And I think this is just a way to, to get, get, expand the use of that, that land to an area that could have an adverse effect on our property values and other things in the neighborhood. Uh, I think, again, all of us moved in there, purchased land, made investments based on the understanding of what the use permit would be for and expand it through a special use permit on the last lot there. Uh, doesn't seem like a very good measure for the other 149 res uh, 48 residents that are there. So I appreciate your, your uh, denial of the special use permit. Thank you. Are there any other opponents who wish to be heard? Seeing none, does the proponent wish a minute or two of rebuttal? Um, I would just like to, well, I guess I need to state my name again. Erin yes. Render, 2315 South 168th. 
Um, just a couple of things that were uh, brought up. Um, part of the reason that, um, you know, Five Fountains is a beautiful neighborhood. And so part of the reason that we've made sure that we have chosen a builder that's already built in that, home, in that location so that it remains with the same feel. Um, when looking at expanding our current business, that's one of the fears we always had was we, the home-like environment is so we've seen it proven over and over to be beneficial for those with dementia. And so that was our fear is we never, when we go to expand, we, we want to be very careful not to, um, you know, we want to stay true to that feel. And so that's why we selected a residential builder versus a commercial. That's why we want a residential lot because, you know, it doesn't matter if these people have dementia or not, they still deserve to live in a beautiful home in a nice neighborhood. Um, the other reason for that particular lot being an, a good fit is because it does sit on the edge and so the traffic would not be going into the neighborhood um, and so that's what we felt that um, versus something that was stuck all the way in the middle of a neighborhood this sits right on the corner um, so people would be you know entering and exiting um, as far as safety and I had mentioned this at the last meeting but by the time we are caring for these individuals, a lot of them um, have very, very decreased um, and limited mobility. Um, the house has um, secure doors so that they're unable to leave without assistance. There's, you know, fire sprinklers for safety. There's, um, again, all the doors are secured. Uh, the residents are not able to go out without a caregiver. Um, and so that doesn't, um, you know, I'm not concerned about that at one at all. Um, then as far as property values, when looking at the um, original um, proposal, it looks like it does come in higher, um, about 20% higher than the median home values of those that were recently sold. Um, and so, you know, and we've, con we've conformed to the covenants as far as the amount of stone, what the outside needs to look at, like landscaping, um, and all the other city requirements. Did you ask for or believe you're entitled to accommodation under the ADA? Did we ask for? The city and the, the permit, special use permit process for the aged, uh, disabled, well, we, memory impaired. We. I'm not sure on um, what you mean by that. We are we fall under the assisted living um, state licensure, so that's the next step. Is that that would all be um, approved based on the floor plans that we submit to them? So we are waiting for this approval before we proceed. Okay, thank you. You may want to stay close by for council member questions. Okay, and did everyone get the um, the drawings of the the renderings of the outside of the home and? I do have pictures of our current homes to show that they blend right in with the neighborhood if needed. Clerk says it's in the record. We'll close the public hearing and call on Council Member Pauls. I'm going to cut to the chase. Uh, may I have the uh, law department's attention? Uh, Paul, could I attorney? You always have our attention. <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. Appreciate that. Uh, what can we as a Council do or not do on this particular special use permit? Uh, there are some limitations in federal law. It's the uh, Americans with Disabilities Act would be applicable to this situation since you have uh, memory assisted individuals uh, in the facility. That act also requires reasonable accommodations be made to uh, people with disabilities. In this case, we've had this in the past before the City Council. Uh, we uh, cannot impose parking restrictions, for example. Um, obviously, looks and design, we cannot impose. Um, some life safety restrictions, uh, we can impose. But other than that, the city needs to make reasonable accommodations for, uh, again, individuals with disabilities. With respect to the covenants, that's something that the city does not get involved in. That's a matter between the homeowners association and the individual homeowner. And uh, we've always stayed out of that uh, discussion. Uh, by what you've told me, then uh, I'm to assume that we're really, uh, it's pretty tough.
tough for us to say no to a situation like this if we're going to uh, work within the law? Uh, many years ago, we did say no to a similar situation, and we were sued, and we lost that suit and paid a fair amount of money. So uh, your hands are somewhat tied. Uh, again, you do have some flexibility with respect to life safety issues. Um, but other than that, we have to make accommodations to individuals with disabilities. Okay, thank you. Uh, that tells me that basically uh, I need to say yes on this for the reason of the law. <clears throat> and also, uh, having had a uh, family member who gone through the Alzheimer's situation before she passed, uh, we do need to think about individuals who have this issue. And uh, I agree that they need to <clears throat> live in a, an appropriate place. And uh, to me, this is just a, now a little bit of my uh, thinking here. You know, it used to be we accepted our families. Uh, you know, our mothers would live with us, our fathers. I mean, that's old school. I know that doesn't happen. It did not happen with me. So uh, I would probably, um, thinking of us having this in my neighborhood, in fact, there's one not too far from me where I live. Uh, I don't see a lot of traffic in and out. The sad thing about it is probably a lot of times these individuals do not get the attention that they deserve uh, because we have a tendency to move through life so fast that before you know it, there will be a number of you or and myself who may need uh, a um, home such as this. And uh, like I say, the law tells me that I should be supporting this my heart tells me if I thought anything of my mother, I would appreciate something like this. Uh, I do know having a nice house is very nice, but the, <clears throat> uh, for some reason I have to believe that the human is uh, probably more important than a house that's worth several hundred thousand dollars. So I think I'm trying to get my point across. To, uh, um, and I think I've said enough. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Harding. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I think I'll ask Aaron if, if I could have you come up. I had a couple of questions. It, and if the, um, I think Mr. Marriott uh, brought up a number of points I, I thought maybe you, you might want to respond to. Um, when, there, you know, some of the neighborhood concerns were the fit and feel mm -hmm. of, the, they say, a commercial building. Right. And maybe before I have you address that, I'll ask, uh, Mr. Fanslow, is is this considered a um, residential or a commercial use? Uh, City planning, it's a residential use. Okay. So, Aaron, if, if you care to address, I want, I'm just going to go down the, the list that Mr. Marriott okay. brought up. So, if you want to yeah. address it so we can hear, hear your points as well. Sure. Um, They'll turn that on for you if you put it down face up. I'm not good with technology here. I just wanted to show a lot of people have probably seen this house across the street from Lakeside Hospital. Um, besides the small sign in the front yard, many people don't realize what we all do here. Um, they have no idea that we take care of eight individuals every day that are very, very frail, um, that rely on us for to meet all their daily needs. And so I just wanted to show that one now that one's a little bit different because it does where it does sit um, but this is our other location and if you see here it fits right into the neighborhood um, in fact um, besides the little logo that i put on the um, the mailbox this house sits in the sunny slope neighborhood and again there are nine individuals that live here that um, you know we're good neighbors we have to keep up the lawn because this is our livelihood and we um, want to continue taking care of individuals and so we do need to keep our properties looking good and um, of course we want to be good neighbors because we want to be able to serve those um, maybe caring for their loved one in the neighborhood um, at a convenient location so those were a couple of the things that i wanted to point out for the the fit and the feel um, and again I know that you said that you have a current rendering of our. If, and if you have that, if you want to put that up, that might be helpful as well. Yeah. And have you have you shared this with the the neighborhood? Yeah. Okay. 
so I don't have the largest one, but this is a um, this is one of the pictures. Um, there is a small, very small. We we said that we wouldn't put you know a sign in the yard, which I know there's restrictions on that, but um, there's just a small plaque on the home that says Legato, um, but otherwise it you know there's a garage. There's it has everything that if it was ever converted back to a single family home, it could easily be done so. Um, the former owner before we bought it four years ago, he had five properties that were once or once operating like this that were then converted and they were all converted to single family. Um, really the difference is you take the locks off the doors and you, well, they may want a fire sprinkler system still, but um, that's the, the main difference is. Okay, so on, on the traffic issues or congestion issues related to traffic, Right. Um, can you kind of address how, how those would be addressed? Did I just say, can you address how those could be addressed? Yes. <laughs> so this is the, this is the parking um, situation. And yes, there are two, um, there is parking on both sides. Um, that was to, you know, one, allow for people to pull in and um, be able to pull back out onto Western. Um, again, they won't have to go into the neighborhood. This sits 192nd is right here, and so they, you know, would not be going into the neighborhood. Is, is there a median of any sort on Western? There is a median, yes. And you, but you said that they wouldn't have to go into the neighborhood? No. So if you were coming out of here, they may turn around okay. at the median, but otherwise this one, my understanding, um, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, but this um, second parking that is on the, they would be able to pull okay. around. And then um, Mr. Marriott and the neighbors also had some questions about the um, safety, both as it relates to the, the residents as well as the neighbors. And um, as I addressed earlier, those, um, you know, that's obviously our biggest concern too, is we're responsible for these people's lives. and to keep them safe because they aren't safe in a regular setting at this point. And so, um, you know, as far as all of our staff being trained, as far as the doors being secured, not being allowed to go out without um, being accompanied by someone else, um, fire sprinklers, um, fire alarm um, system, it's, we meet all the state requirements um, to make sure that our residents are safe. Okay, and then um, I think you kind of covered the property values when you talked about the conversion from from possibly this use to a single family use. Um, I didn't cover in particular, but just um, as far as what our cost, we we're looking at um, the original bid to build was coming in at upper 600s, so it does fit within the rest of the community. Okay. And that, thank you. Um, I had a couple more questions for Mr. Fanslow as well. Um, Mr. Fanslow, as it relates to kind of a, a next use, this is a, um, a special use permit. Is it for this operator alone, or does it does it follow the the um, use in a change of ownership? Uh, Dave Fanslow, City Planning. We did not specify this to this user only. So once granted on the property it could continue to be used as a large group living facility. But but in no regard would, I mean, it wouldn't be able to be converted to, since it's still zoned, I believe, R4? Is that R3. Right? Pardon me? R3. R3. Um, obviously, uh, you know, that wouldn't be allowed for a commercial use. Um, well, yeah, since it has residential zoning and the proposed use is residential, um, it could, you know, anything that's allowed in R, Three, three yeah. which is residential maybe a few civic uses but the site probably doesn't allow itself to be that um, I, yeah to answer your question yeah no no commercial uses on this okay site. and then I'll, I'll briefly touch on a couple of the covenants mr. Kratz um, uh, pointed out that that's not really that's usually not an area where the city delves into it's it's more between the the property owner and the the um, homeowners association but because I know at the planning board, I think there was some 
Um, I think the original plan may have included a, a privacy fence, and I don't believe the Homeowners Association allows fences in, in that area. So I know I, I just raised that issue. Again, that's a covenant issue and, and not something that the city is going to be able to weigh in on, but um, it, that's still probably something that the the user and the um, and the homeowners association are going to have to figure out if this is approved. Thank you. Um, I would just add, uh, I don't see any other lights, so um, echo the comments of Council Member Pauls. If anyone's uh, other uh, members of the audience or uh, people are keenly aware if you had a family member with Alzheimer's it can be a pretty profound experience on with your family and like you a mother where it's really doubly impacting to your family to see your mother's uh, memory demise and then the physical things that come with it so to me um, I respect your mission and and what you're doing and the special care that you've taken to make a proposal to to fulfill that mission in a, while being sensitive to the neighborhood and the design and the use and the things you're doing to incorporate in this. Uh, Council Member Melton. One of the homes is in Sunny Slope that you wouldn't know driving by it. You wouldn't have any idea that it wasn't just a regular home. And I can say that, um, and I communicate a lot with the Sunny Slope neighborhood, very active neighborhood, not one complaint. There hasn't been one safety issue um, you've got the park in there you've got the school um, really you you don't know that what exists on the on the inside and it, it does especially this one where it sits off on the neighborhood I I just want to say of all projects where people do complain about uh, maybe increased traffic this is going to have such a minimal impact you could have a family with three teenagers <clears throat> like I have in my neighborhood right now with friends that's probably going that ha creates more traffic um, and people that don't drive as well as maybe people visiting their parents so I as much as I what I say is I, I've heard the HOA and I've heard the concerns I, I think that you're going to be pleasantly surprised that that that's not going to impact your neighborhood and then second to the city even if I agreed, I don't think we can subject the city to another lawsuit that we've been there, done that, and we, we pretty much know we're going to lose. Now, I, I won't make any comments on the legalities of the covenants. Uh, that will be between the owner of the property and this, and that, you know I don't know where that goes. But we're not here to, to determine whether the covenants are being violated um, or if they are, what those remedies are. That will have to be for a court case. So I just I wanted the neighborhood to know we, we've heard and listened, but at least for the one that I have in my district, it's a wonderful addition. And I, I wish or hope that if I'm ever in that position where I have a parent um, that suffers from the dementia or uh, memory loss, that I'll be able to take care of them, if not in my home, in a home down the street. So thank you. Thank you. I'll second the motion. Roll call. Palermo? Yes. Festerson? Yes. Gray? Yes. Harding? Yes. Melton? Yes. Pauls? Yes. Mr. President? Yes. Item 12 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 13, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for 13th Street Brick House located at 2202 South 13th Street, A's Communication and Opposition. The public hearing on Item 13 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Uh, Mr. President, members, Mike Kelly, 2804 South 87th Avenue. Appearing here today with uh, Corby Aberg, who is the proposed new applicant taking over this, this uh, particular establishment. And for the record, she has no connection to the prior people who were there, and she has no connection to the landlord. And with that, we're here for any questions you might have. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Um, I have a couple questions. There were. Um, some people who emailed in uh, concerns. Uh, one of the concerns was to make sure you understood as your business that the parking that Sokol Auditorium provides for its patrons are exclusive to their use. And if you want to have any kind of a 
discussion about making those spaces available for your customers. You'd need to reach out to them, and they may or may not do that with you, but they want to make sure you understood that. Are sure. you aware of that? Absolutely. Um, second, there is a vacant lot to the north, mm -hmm. I believe, is it Castellar? Dorcas. Dorcas. Yeah. Why don't you give your name for the name and address for the record? Corby Aberg, 1861 Front Street, Blair, Nebraska. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, that's not um, a part of your business. No, it's not. You don't own it. You don't have any lease rights to that. You understand. And there, it's posted no parking. It is posted no parking. That if there are people parking there that are your customers, you, you would you agree to post a, a sign in your a conspicuous area of the business to make sure people know they're not to park there, they could be towed? If, yes. Okay. Absolutely. We're there for the neighborhood and we don't want to okay. make any money. And then will you confirm for the record that in terms of uh, Mr. Kurt Krychek, mm -hmm. he has no interest either um, uh, in the open or hidden uh, or otherwise in your business? No. Okay. No interest. In he that. simply owns the, the, bu the building exactly. and would be your landlord? Landlord only, yes. Okay. And the business itself has parking on 13th Street available in the front, yes. and it has parking to the west on the west side of the business. Is that yes. correct? Yes. Um, I, th I think you've you've addressed the concerns that the people that I've heard from. Okay. There's roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Item 13 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 14, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for Fala's Wine and Cheese, located at 2627 at North 205th Street. The public hearing on item 14 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Uh, 2627 North 205th Street, Jacqueline Schmidt. Thank you. Here to answer any questions? Yes. Thanks. Any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 14 is approved, 7 to 0. Item 15, an application to consider a Class CK liquor license for Empire Room, located at 200 South 31st Avenue, Suite 4107, A's communication from the Planning Department regarding a building permit for the outdoor area. The public hearing on item 15 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Dan Cavan, 17547, Patrick F. Brooke Hudson, 107 South 55th Street. We're both representing Alma Design Center, DBA, Empire Room. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Are you aware that this would be contingent upon obtaining the proper permits? Yes. Thanks. a second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Paul. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Thank you. Item 16, an application to consider a Class C liquor license for River City Saloon located at 1802 Vinton Street. The public hearing on item 16 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Hello, my name is Monica Henderson, uh, 1714 Bellevue Boulevard North, and I'm here as an applicant and to answer questions. Thank you. Are there any other proponents? Are there any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Council Member Palermo. Thank you, Mr. President. Mrs. Henderson, you didn't think I was going to let you off that easy, right? I was hoping you would. <laughs> uh, we served on a PTO together, so now you're here for a liquor license. Yes. We all need that establishment after. Those rough PTO yes. meetings, right? <laughs> yes, we do. Uh, I know you'll do good, so thank you. Thank you. Move to approve. Second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Item 16 is approved, 7 to 0. Consent agenda. Any member of the City Council may cause any item placed on the consent agenda to be removed. Items removed from the consent agenda shall be taken up by the City Council immediately following the consent agenda and the order in which they were removed, unless otherwise provided by the City Council rules of order. The public hearings on agenda items 17 through 35 
were held on July 23, 2019. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Pesterson. Yes. Gray. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Halls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. The public hearings on agenda items 36 through 48 are today. If you wish to address the City Council regarding these items, please come to the microphone, indicate the agenda item number you wish to address, identify yourself by your name, address, who you represent, and if you are a proponent or opponent. Remove item 42. And we will remove item 42 from the consent agenda as there has been a request by planning department to withdraw. Nicole Ingalls, Planning Department. I'm here for agenda item 43 just to answer any questions. Thank you. Ben Swan, 3515 Hawthorne Avenue. Uh, here regarding item number 43, the consolidated HUD budget. Um, I just want to say thank you for including uh, my project with the Carnation Ballroom uh, on this agenda, on the budget item. This will allow us to save the Carnation Ballroom, which is a local landmark that um, the City Council has been a part of, and I appreciate that. We're going to put a new roof on the building. We're going to repair all the structural defects with this and um, restore cultural treasure to the community with this and preserve the building. So thank you very much, and I'll do my best to do a good job with it. Thank you. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this part of the agenda? Yes, Lavanya Goodwin, 3116 North 24th Street. And I'm here in support of Vince Swan and the Coronation Bar Ballroom. A necessary improvement for North 24th Street. Uh, the Coronation is one of 37 historic uh, buildings on North 24th Street. So to see that building restored is very important to the landscape of the area. So we support that endeavor. Thank you. Are there any, any others wishing to testify on this part of the agenda? I'm a little hard of hearing. Is this uh, any of the items? Anything on but it's. Um, I am opposed to 43, 48, and 50. And your name and address? Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue. Thank you. Now, do I get a comment on each yes, one of those? Yes, you may. 43. Let's take that one first. 43, 48, and 50. 50 is not on consent. 50 is not on consent. You'll have to come uh, back for that one. On number uh, 43. Okay. Uh, I think we, the, the citizens ought to be able to know who these partnerships are and whether or not the Omaha Land Bank is involved, uh, who the developers are, uh, whether there's TIF involved in any of them. This really doesn't give us a lot of information. On number 48, mental health is uh, a broad term that covers an awful lot of things. I would like to submit some information for your consideration <clears throat> on the topic of mental health as it applies to your agenda as well as the Douglas County Board. Well, you can submit on item 48. Would you staple that, please? Um, Number 48 is talking about the Douglas County Mental Health Center, which is on the debates for funding by city and county. That's why I wanted to speak about it. There are other organizations that do have best practices. Uh, funding might be able to be cut if, as of July 31st, juveniles that are age 11 or under cannot be detained. So maybe we can reduce budgets because that population is now not being detained. This Thank is, you. Okay, I was going to say this is for uh, protective custody of intoxicated individuals. Is there anyone else wishing to testify on this portion of the agenda? Good afternoon. I'm Linda Toomey representing the Sienna Francis House at 1702 Nicholas Street. Um, we'd like to applaud city planning and the process they took to determine the allegations in ESG and the items in um, 43. And we hope that the city council will approve 
those recommendations set forth by city planning as they continue the work of many agencies to disadvantaged and disabled individuals in the community. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify in this portion of the agenda? Hello, I'm Heidi Smith. I'm the Director of Domestic Violence Services at Catholic Charities. Um, our main campus is at 3300 North 60th Street. And our program has three components, a 24-hour crisis line, a shelter, and also community reintegration. And we want to thank um, <clears throat> Mayor Stothard and the City Council for um, looking into and seeing if we can have that emergency shelter grant that helps us provide um, services to those in need. Thank you. What agenda item were you? 43, sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who wishes to testify on this portion of the agenda? Seeing none, the public hearing is closed. Approved. So that'll be agenda items. I will, just a second, if I just want to read the, the motion. 36 through 41 and 43 through 48. And there's a second? second. All right. Uh, Mr. Gray. Yes, I just wanted to take the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. President. First of all, I just want to take the opportunity, first of all, to thank Linda with uh, Santa Francis House for the, the work that she is doing there and the, th and the changes that are being that she is making there. I think it's going to be, I, I think Santa Francis House is, although it's a work in progress, I think we're doing some really good things to address that. And I just wanted to thank also Ben Swan and Lavanya Goodwin uh, for their continued efforts on our 20, or North 24th Street BID and your purchase of the, of the, of the uh, building because I think that's going to be one of the catalysts that's going to help develop and continue to, to build on that BID along 24th, North 24th Street. So I just wanted to thank the three of them. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. Gray. There's a motion, a second. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Even though we're going, there's probably going to be a motion to allow withdrawal on item 42. We have advertised, and so there, there will be a public hearing on item 42 if anyone came here today wishing to testify. Seeing none, public hearing is closed. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Pauls. Yes. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 49, an ordinance approving a second amendment to the redevelopment agreement with the Georgetown Zone 3 LLC to remove a parcel from the approved redevelopment plan area is an amendment of the whole requested by the law department. The votes today, is there a motion on the amendment as a whole? Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Item 50, an ordinance to approve an agreement with Lutheran Family Services in the amount of $398,836 and to authorize funding for such agreement from the City of Omaha's Fiscal Year 2018 Justice and Mental Health Collaboration Program Grant Award. The public hearing on item 50 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? Larry Store, 5015 Lafayette Avenue, Omaha, Nebraska. The items that I offered earlier also apply to this. Uh, mental health is, uh, you know, a very strange thing that you, you maybe can't uncover in a short period of time. Checklists on an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper doesn't always get to the meat of the matter as to whether it's actually a mental illness or not. So detain people based on a checklist and a short interview and having them assessed based on that necessarily is off base. Often people with mental illnesses, perhaps autism or disorders of the corpus callosum, <clears throat> don't process very quickly. And as such, they may be uh, frightened. Uh, they may act out because they're not thinking properly, because the brain's not processing what they were told. I had an experience in Lincoln where some police officers have been trained in how to de-escalate, and they handled the situation very well. 
What you need to keep in mind is when a rat is cornered or a squirrel is cornered, he's going to fight to get away. And that's what happens with a lot of particularly juveniles or people that have mental illness. When we don't know that they are, we don't already know they have it. So I hope the program with these threat assessors is successful, but you might make an awful lot of mistaken prejudgments also. Thank you. Are there any other opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 51, an ordinance amending ordinance number 40589 to remove language reserving rights to the city in portions of B Street and 33rd Street and abutting alleys which were vacated by said ordinance. The public hearing on item 51 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 52, an ordinance amending ordinance number 40345 to remove language reserving rights to the city in Ida Circle, which was vacated by said ordinance. The public hearing on item 52 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 53, an ordinance authorizing and directing an issue as additional bonds for the sanitary sewerage system revenue refunding bonds series 2019 in an aggregate principal amount of $23,500,000. The public hearing on item 53 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Any opponents? Public hearing is closed. Item 54, an ordinance to amend section 33-46 to change the number of permanent inhabitants needed in a single unit to exceed the established solid waste limit from eight to five. The public hearing on item 54 begins at this time. Are there any proponents? Are there any opponents? And I would note, I believe it's our intention that to, even though there's a public hearing today, we'll probably continue the public hearing to another date to allow additional opportunity to comment. Council, uh, public hearing is closed. Mr. Festerson. Thanks, Mr. President. I, I agree with that notion of continuing the public hearing to have it align with the rest of our conversation on this. But if there was a public works representative here, I might ask them just a couple questions today to, to help us in our thinking as these things come together. Um, Mr. Fitzer, I think you were in our briefing this morning, but I can't recall if you were here for this part. Um, I thought it might be worthwhile just to walk through a couple of these things because we'll have a lot to discuss in coming weeks on, on the various items on this topic. Um, and since that meeting, uh, a few count council members have requested <laughs> some analysis on what would this cost and how many folks might this apply to, and we have since been sent that information. I was wondering if you want a chance to talk about that a little bit today. How many inhabitants might this impact and what it might cost if adopted? Trying to get the microphone on here. It's on. Okay. Todd Pitzer, Public Works. No, Councilman, I have not had the opportunity to gather that information. I apologize. Okay. This is this was the first. I was at pre-council, as you know, but this is the first that was brought to my attention. Okay. Well, we can wait to have this conversation, too, I suppose. I, I think a couple of things because I know we're all interested in it and, and received some information about it, is that um, the estimate is it could apply to about 10,600 eligible households that have five or more people. But in their thinking, uh, a lot fewer people would probably take advantage of that opportunity to request additional uh, capacity or additional service. Um, could cost up to a million dollars if adopted, but they think probably a lot less, maybe up, maybe around $200,000 if, if executed. I would note also that, and several council members I think observed this in the last week, that the ordinance we have before us today merely changes the, the number from eight to five folks in a household that could request additional service <laughs> if they wanted it. Uh, but there's a lot of other stuff in this ordinance that needs to be changed regardless of what we do and would have to come back to us later anyway. It references the five cans, it references unlimited yard waste, all kinds of things like that that, that um, are not part of any scenario before us at this point also. So um, I suppose this ordinance might need to go forward, but even if it did, um, more changes would have to be necessary at a later time. And then lastly, I guess the question I would have, and, and maybe it's not for you, Mr. Pitzer, is um, my impression is the administration would only support this ordinance if an option involving two cards is adopted, not a three-card option. But I'd be interested in knowing that, um, that information going forward, too. So um, with that, I'll just end comments, and we'll continue the public hearing for um, what would be two weeks from now? Is that a motion? August. Yep. Second. August 13th. August 13th. August 13th. Yeah. Any further discussion? Roll call. Palermo. 
motion again. Motion is to um, continue the public hearing to August 13th. Okay, that's thanks. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed seven to zero. Non-action items, items 55 through 65, do not require public hearing or city council consideration at this meeting, but will be placed on a future agenda for public hearing and or vote. The reason for non-action is noted after the item on the agenda, as well as the date the item is expected to appear on an agenda for consideration. Motion to adjourn. Roll call. Palermo. Yes. Festerson. Yes. Gray. Yes. Harding. Yes. Melton. Yes. Pauls. Mr. President. Yes. Motion passed 7 to 0. Meeting is adjourned at 2.55.